Welcome back to Crystal Wellness Studios. Today is April 5th. I hope everybody's had a good uh, Easter weekend. And we're going to start with our polychrome uh, barrel that's in polish. This was a ketchup barrel, um, as we've been discussing. And it's just been rinsed from the polish. And let's check the shine. Oh my gosh, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. All right, this is going to need a burnish cycle, which is um, just a wash cycle, but instead of the draft baby soap, we use borax, uh, less foam, and uh, and it cleans off any residual, um, you know, polish grit or polish. Uh, slurry that we have left. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on these polychromes today. Oh, there's that piece of kebaba because there's kebaba and everything. Uh. Ooh, gorgeous. Okay. We, uh, since this was a ketchup barrel and we've handled polychrome jasper in the past, I just wanted to show you the progress on it and not really spend a lot of time on camera. But it's going to go through a burnish cycle and then it'll be ready to go put up on the store. All right, fantastic. Lovely pieces. Uh, our next barrel that we have in polish is our Indigo Gabbro or Mystic Merlinite. It'll be coming up next. Okay. And we're back with our Indigo Gabbro, um, also known as Mystic Marlinite. It is, has been in wet aluminum oxide polish for one week. And this is an experiment because we wanted to know if this, um, what did we want to know? We wanted to know if this would take the wet polish or if it needed to be in dry. So let's check it out. Okay, I'm gonna dip it in our water. Let's dry it off a little bit. Oh my. Well, on the first piece we pulled, it looks like the wet polish worked. A nice shine on the stone and mystic merlinite has two different properties in it and has two different textures so it's really interesting to see how it takes a polish okay let's see if we can grab another one here Lots of flash. Look how dark that lavender is in there. Lavender and black. Mm. Alrighty. Oh, I'm going to call this a success. All right, I'm going to dig the rest of these out and put them, uh, clean the barrel. We have nothing that's going in polish this week. So we're going to clean this barrel um, and then put this everything back in it and we're going to run a burnish cycle with the uh, borax. 
and we will be back with our next barrels. I don't think we have anything in 1,000 this week, so uh, we'll be back with our 500 barrels. All right. And we're back with our barrels in 500 uh, pre-polish aluminum oxide. This is our mixed Mohs 7 barrel that we're running a catch-up on. And um, we've got a lot of different stuff in here. All Mohs Hardness 7, obviously. This is a Serape Jasper. It's looking really good. So a little wet from the wash. It's another piece of Serape. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Here's a blue lace agate. It's all looking like it's progressing well. We want to double check for chips. We want to see how the uh, it's a polychrome, a clear crystal. You see how we were talking before about how the higher grade grits will fix the crazing or the scratching on the surface of. Uh, the stones and make them clearer so yeah so that's happening just beautifully there is a lot broken on this one so we are gonna have to find that broken piece I think part of it is right here yep that's part of it that is uh, going to have to be repaired before it can go move forward because it will damage everything else that's in the barrel. So we're going to have to go through and look really carefully. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Piece of chrysoprase. There's another healer quartz, and it's got, again, this healer... This golden uh, quartz has got damage. There's damage on that as well. Okay, so let's put this damage over here. This one's okay. Yeah, we're just, uh, we're going to have to look and remove any damage and we're going to go through the ceramic media uh, really carefully and make sure that there's no damage in there or uh, chips. But sometimes they hide in there. Oh, that piece is just not really doing what we want it to do. See how it's starting to erode on the fracture lines there, and the crush marks and the pitting. Yeah, I'm not happy with that piece either. So, this happens sometimes. We get damage in the barrel. But we were trying to get um, all these, we have so much stuff that's been sitting on the uh, repair or the uh, catch-up wall, you know, from our split batches and stuff. I was just trying to get them all done quickly. So we're just looking for cracks, pits, um, you know, other sorts of damage. Trying to keep these together here. And that piece of amethyst has damage as well. Goodness. Some of these we were just hoping would just get repaired by magic. <laughs> we knew when we put them in here they weren't really in good shape. Another piece of golden. That one's okay. Oh, that's a really dark smoky. Mm. Yeah. 
Oh, look at that. More kambaba. Jeez, oh, pizza stuff is everywhere. Kind of like the zebra. Chocolate jasper. Polychrome. I think uh, we're uh, definitely splitting this out. We're taking out the damaged pieces. And um, if we have a tiny barrel available, because this isn't a three pound and there's not enough to go back in the three pound. And I think we're going to split all this out. Yeah, it just has a fracture line. I just don't really care. Okay, most of this can go forward to 1,000 grit. I'm not seeing any more chips, which is bothering me because there was so much damage that I'm wondering where those damaged pieces went. All right, I'm gonna take this and look at it really carefully off camera. Let's see what the deal is with all this ceramic media. Which, I mean, on the surface looks really super good, but it could be holding, you know, a chip or, so, or something. So, I need to find those. Alright, this barrel of mixed mows is going to move to 1,000 after a couple wash cycles. And, uh, we're just going to make darn sure that everything that goes to 1000 is in really super good shape because um, we don't want any further damage to happen. Yeah, each of these pieces just has a little something. Mm. Which is why they were in ketchup barrels. Okay, we are done with this one. And uh, it's going to go into a couple wash cycles. The stuff that we pulled out over here is uh, going to go back to a, a higher or to a lower grade grit, back to the silicone carbides because it needs to be processed a little bit more. Um, it might even go onto the flat lap for tiny repairs before it moves moves anywhere else. Um, yeah, I'm starting to get quite a bit that need to go on the flat lap. So I try to not run that too often because um, it's a pain to clean. I mean, it's this breeze to use, super quiet, really love the flat lap machine. It's just, you know, cleaning it for, you know, working on one or two stones is kind of a pain. So I'd rather just collect them all and do one big batch. Anyway, we're going to move on to our next barrel in 500. And we're back with our yellow adventurine. This is our batch that's in 500 aluminum oxide pre-polish. It's looking gorgeous. There was no chippage in the barrel. The ceramic media looks beautiful. There was no leftover grit. So, oh, damn it. See, you gotta say it too quickly. And there's damage on that piece. These lovely little yellow chunks are feeling really good, but you don't want to trust the naked eye. You want to trust the feel of the stone and make sure that it's as smooth as you want it to be before moving forward. And I think this is definitely ready for 1,000 other than uh, that one piece we found that had damage on it. Now this is the cleavage lines or the fracture marks on the stone. And if left on its own, I think that like this part right here could sh chip off and uh, cause damage. So I'm going to try to repair that on a flat lap before we let it move forward. So we're going to set that one aside. 
Those are some of the things <clears throat> that we're looking for. This was a superior batch of Yellow Adventurine, I have to admit. It's just working very nicely. Not really seeing a lot of <clears throat> problems with this batch. We did split it because a few pieces needed more time in a coarser grit. Hmm. That little valley that we have there from that fracture line could cause damage. Hmm. I don't know if that's going to move forward or if I'm going to work on it. When I say cause damage, we're talking about um, crazing, uh, which is scra minute scratches on the surface that gives it a frosted look. Um, totally undesirable. Hmm. No, nothing catches. Oh, that's that little piece that I like the shape of. Okay, this can go through a wash cycle and go to 1000. Um, I think I'm going to let that one go. That looks pretty solid. This needs to be repaired. My goodness, we're getting enough to run a repair today. Okay. Yellow Adventurine in the 500 is ready for a wash cycle and then to move to 1000. So we will say wash. Um, 1,000. Okay, let me put this aside. Oh, all right. See, we've got a couple more in 500. We'll be right back. We're back with our Mexican Crazy Lace, which has been running for one week in our 500 pre-polished aluminum oxide. And we've already gone through all the ceramic media and we're good there. We found one chip, which uh, we're gonna add to our gem bottle uh, project. These are just really tiny pieces. These really are not chips, they're just tiny little pieces. But, I mean, this stuff we started so small. Oh, look at that, there's a piece of that golden healer. That's ready to move forward. Okay. Now, all of this is it has just insane patterns. I'll try and... There we are. Oh my gosh, the dogs are going crazy. Sorry about that. They're seeing the rabbits outside and they want to go play. But look at this crazy lace patterning. It's insane. Now we left it, we didn't um, run this overly long in the course stage, you know, which we normally would have to try to get rid of all of the little nubs and uh, bumps and whatever. But we left it because it was so tiny. I mean, these are really small pieces. But look at the patterns. They really pack a punch. I mean, you can see, you know, you're looking about an inch. Most of them are less than an inch. Wow. Just really super cool. Try and pull out these bigger ones so you can see the patterns better. Let's try this one off. So I'm going to uh, take this uh, and do a wash cycle and I'm going to move it to 1000. We are not treating this crazy last lace ba batch as we do most of them. Um, we're not trying for perfection of the stone surface because we're trying to protect the patterns as much as possible. 
We just want it to have a nice polish when we're finished. I mean, look at that. That's just all kinds of nubby. Little bumps and craters and all kinds of stuff. Hmm. I think these really tiny, tiny pieces uh, we're going to put in the Zen Garden. And these really, oh my gosh, look at that. That's so cool. Okay, crazy lace. I love this stuff. I mean, it's just amazing patterns and, and it's just insane. I guess that's why they call it crazy. Um, yeah, we're gonna give it a wash cycle. We're gonna just pull out a few of these super tiny ones. Super tiny. Super tiny. Yep, moving on to 1000. Couple of weeks, these will all be polished. Just want the really little ones. Okay, I think I got just all the little tiny tinies out. Look at that. Billions of years formed this. Mm. Okay. So this crazy lace agate actually came out of Mexico. Okay, let's put that with the Zen Garden. Alright. Garden that one too. Zen Garden. Yeah, oh, that's a chip. Okay. 1,000 um, after the wash cycles. Okay, we'll be right back. And we're back with the rest of our yellow adventurine that has been in medium silicone carbide grit 120-220. And let's, let's just take a look at it here. Oh, yeah. It's lovely. Absolutely ready to go to 500. Wow. Yep, it just needed that one little extra bit of time. And these pieces are perfect. This is a really small batch. This is, um, yeah, running in our one and a, a half pound barrel. And this is going to move to 500. So we are going to, this is our split batch. So we're going to do a wash. And then this goes to 500. And the other goes to 1,000. Okay. That's pretty darn simple. <sighs> I love it when it goes quickly. All right. We'll be back with our next barrel. And we're back with our bloodstone. Our African bloodstone had uh, been split. The batches have been split quite a bit. So this is what we have run left that's running in the 120, 220 silicone carbide. Um, and to save time, I've really already looked at this off camera. I just want to pull some nice big pieces out here and show you. This is ready to move forward to 500 as well. This is a great big piece um, that we had for a free form. And there's no sharp edges. There's a little bit of roughness and pitting here, but we're never going to get that out without cutting the stone, and I don't want to do that. So we're just going to leave that as part of the natural free form. But the rest of these pieces are catching up and ready to go to 500. 
And because there's so much of the bloodstone, I think we're going to do it in batches. Um, because our six pound barrel is not available. Yeah. These are looking beautiful. There's been no chippage. The ceramic media looks great. It's uh, definitely ready to move forward. We had it running in course for a really long time. And then it's been in 120, about a week. This particular batch has. Another great big piece. Yeah. These are such a dark green, they almost look black on the camera. And let's see if I can. There we are. Yeah. It's looking really good. Yeah, this African bloodstone is finally willing to move forward. I'm going to pop it in 500 so wash cycle it gets. Wow, oh, we're doing really fast this week. Okay, uh, there's a lot more in here, but we're not going to pull it all out, so. Okay, African Bloodstone is moving forward uh, after only one week and 120. That's fantastic. Okay, we will be right back with our two barrels that are in 6090 silicone carbide. Be right back. And we're back with our C Jasper that has been running in coarse 6090 silicone carbide grit for, let's see, how long? One, two, three, four, for five weeks. And hopefully it'll be ready to move forward. But we'll find out. Okay. Sharp edges are practically gone. This is not the best condition rough when we started. It's really super pity. See like there's these pits everywhere. And there's just no getting around it with this batch. I mean unless we scrap the entire thing. Like, let's see, I mean, you see how much stone we would have to lose to even that up? I think that's just going to go in the garden. I think most of this batch should have probably gone straight to the garden. Here's these large pits and divots in here. Not happy with the stone. I mean, really, it could go probably another week in course, but I don't think it's going to do it any good to do so because we're not going to get rid of these pits. We're just going to have a batch that's super pity. I mean, it's just. I don't like it. I, don't, I mean, Sea Jasper is a beautiful stone, but I won't ever buy it again. Um, I'll buy the Ocean Jasper instead because the Sea Jasper is just crap. That one's actually pretty good to move forward. Still a little slurry on these. Yeah, I'm uh, 
just not real tickled with it. I think what we're going to do is run it yet another week uh, in 6090 coarse grit. Um, wow. I mean, look at these pits. That's never going to come out. That's just going to be a crap stone. <sighs> Into the garden. Wow. I mean, even the flat lap won't help these, which is a pity. And the reason I say that is because there's so many pits. There'll be like zero stone left by the time you're done grinding it all down. So it's just not worth the cost of eating up blades on the grinder when you're, you just already know we're not going to get a good outcome. A couple of these can move forward. Just a chip there. Wow. This is just not good stone. Too bad you can't get your money back on this stuff. Yeah, this is just all crap. There's another chip. That's it for the chips. Wow. I mean, it's just... <sighs> it sucks. It's like you almost don't even want to continue, but... Bit of a challenge now. Bit of a challenge. So we have four pieces moving forward. We've got a couple pieces for chips. We moved a couple to garden stone. There's a chip ceramic media. Let's take that out. Yeah, not happy. Oh well, they can't all be perfect. Perfect matches. As much as we would like them to be. I'm going to give these um, a good rinse. I'm going to clean out the barrel, which I really don't need to do because it's going back into 6090. But I'm doing it anyway. Let's try and help it as much as we can here. We're going to try and get it a really good thick slurry this time. Um, not that the others haven't been, but yeah, I'm not happy with the Sea Jasper at all. Ah, that's so sad. Okay, we are going to come right back with our next barrel. Alright, we're going to start a new barrel. This is our six pound barrel, and we're putting in red adventuring. So, might as well run them all, right? Okay, we're going to run this with six tablespoons of and we're running six tablespoons of 6090 coarse silicone carbide grit and one tablespoon of baking soda and no ceramic media. And then we will see this next week. Yay, a new barrel. Alrighty, boy, that was fast. Okay. All right, everyone, see you next week. And we're back with our last barrel that we had running in our 6090 coarse silicone carbide grit. This is our um, red adventuring. And it's been running about a week and a half. Um, it's been in our six pound barrel and we had uh, some issues with that tumbler not wanting to pull all the weight because we had the rose quartz that was running and that was really heavy and then all this adventuring. So, yikes. This is looking beautiful. There's been no ceramic media in here. Um, 
this you know this first go round because we're trying to get all the chips to come off and we got quite a bit of chips lots and lots of chippage and there's more in here too so this adventurine sorry about that is coming along beautifully it's uh got a little bit of shaping left to go obviously it's only been like a week and a half we've got all kinds of sizes in here mostly small and that's fine but as you can see, a lot of this, these edges have smoothed down quite a bit. Just has a little bit more work to go. I think what we're just going to do is recharge this barrel. Gosh, that's almost like I want to send it to 120. But I think it would be premature. Yeah, let's give it a week with ceramic media. It's like little cubes of meat there's still a little bit of shaping that can be done yeah definitely okay well it's good to take a good look at this we're gonna uh, finish going through this I want to get all the um, yeah you can see how it still needs shaping I want to make sure we get all the chips out of it we're gonna put ceramic media with it this time we're going to recharge the barrel. Um, which really, for this week, it's like starting over because uh, we dumped all the ceramic media. I mean, dumped all the uh, contents, the slurry and everything because we were looking for the chips. Wow, well, some of these are really ready for 120, but I don't want to split this too soon. So we're going to have um, a couple of barrels open because the uh, polish, we had two barrels of polish and those finished. So we are going to um, start something new in both those barrels this week. Not sure what we're going to start yet, but we'll come back with that in just a moment. Ooh, this red adventurine is really pretty cool. And as you can see, there's a lot of small pieces. Let's see if I can get that to rest on my pinky. Well, small pieces, some slightly larger. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not uh, really disappointed in this rough. This, this looks like it's, you know, coming along really well. There's a big piece. It's got some pitting in it. Hopefully we can get that knocked out. Yeah. There's some extra bitch. Red Adventurine. Holy cow. There's a lot of it. Like I said, this is in our six pound barrel. We're going to have two three-pound barrels open up. I wonder what we're going to start. I think maybe some green adventuring. We've done all the other colors. So maybe another jasper. Not really sure. We have a lot to do. I might do something different. Ooh, that one's really beat up. Red Adventurine is going to go for its second week in course. Oh cow, there is a lot of this. So 
just trying to get all the rest of the chips. That might be a bad one. Okay. We have our chips. That one can actually go in the Zen Garden. It's a rather large one. That one can go in the Zen Garden. All these are staying the chips. Okay. Red Adventurines going back in for another week in 6090. And uh, we'll be right back with our new barrels. Alright, we are back with uh, our first new barrel for this week, uh, which is going to be Blue Appetite. So this is what it looks like in the rough. And we are going to load up our barrel. Oh, this is fantastic. All right. Blue Appetite. Overload it. Get some smaller pieces in there. Okay, you're going to add a little bit of ceramic media because it's a softer stone, and we are going to uh, put 6090, three tablespoons of that coarse silicone carbide grid in here, um, and some water, and it's going to start running. All right, we'll be right back. Our next new barrel uh, going into the silicone carbide coarse 690 grit is going to be sodalite. So this is what sodalite looks like in the rough. And even though this is a two pound bag, which technically is two thirds of a three pound barrel, we really go on, we don't really want to put that much in here. We don't want to open up the barrel because then we won't get any circulation. Alright, so let's seal this bag up. And we will keep it for our next next one. So solar light is gonna go into this barrel. And then we'll have three tablespoons of silicone carbide, just like the Appetite. And, uh, and we, we've actually got two more barrels that we can run, so we'll be right back. The last barrel we're going to run this week for new is going to be 6090 coarse silicone carbide of Green Adventurine. We are going to run this and then we are going to take some leftover um, we've got so much adventuring in different colors, we're going to add it to this barrel. So, um, we'll see what else we can add to this green adventuring this week. It'll probably be, probably be that peach yellow. Okay, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>